gave to me confirming all the things that are happening in my life, mm -hmm. that are good. Uh, and I want to start by reading from Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 1 to 17, but I'm going to interject certain things as I go along. It says, Then you have been raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. As you know, in James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, <coughs> Jesus talks about not being anxious. You know, he talks about not being anxious about your life, about what you're going to eat, about your body, about what you're going to wear. These are things that we worry about all the time, and it's, it's normal because it's part of our human condition, mm -hmm. you know, to, to worry. But then in verse 32, he says, For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Mm -hmm. God knows what we need. He always has, and he always will. Mm -hmm. Then in verse 33, Jesus says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. <clears throat> seek first the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Colossians. Verse 3, For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. I don't know if some of you remember about two months ago, I talked about this, about putting on the new self. And one of the things that the Lord revealed to me at that time was that we need to let go of all of these things. We need to let go of our past. And we need to do that by putting on the new self. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 20 through 24 said, says, but that is not the way you learn fr Christ. Excuse me. There's an exclamation mark there, so there's an emphasis there. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new self, Created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Back to Colossians, verse 11. Here there is no Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. If you're sad, thank God and worship. If you're heartbroken, thank God and worship. Yeah. If you're feeling oppressed, thank God and worship. Yes. If you're feeling hopeless, thank God and worship. Yeah. Seek the things that are above, Set your minds on the things that are above. Seek the kingdom. Forget what's around you. Yes. Seek the kingdom, and you'll start to see all the blessings that are coming your way. And with that, I open the floor for questions. Yes, Joyce. I'll just share something that goes in line with that. Um, our daughter, who doesn't need to come to you now, has mono. And so, continue praying.
still experiencing these things. But, you know, and, I, and then at that same time, my flesh started getting, like, frustrated. Mm -hmm. Like, man, this is supposed to be working. Why is it, you know, like, wasting all my money? So it was a couple days later. I was home with her and let my new little puppy out. And as I'm looking across our land, it was all, you know, it was all barren and brown. And my eyes focused on this one little with his eyes. Uh, the word God God will just put us in the place because I wear welding helmets and uh, uh, shields and stuff on plasma cutting and things like that work. So you have to use different types of uh, eyewear for different types of things. So yeah, Lord says put on your God goggles and see what I see mm -hmm. instead of what you are seeing. Amen. 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 brought me home and he said, Dad, he says, if you need to walk, call me because I'll come over and walk with you. Mm -hmm. And the other thing he said to me, I gave him a big hug as we usually do. And he says, no, you know, love me as Matt and Mom. He says, but you give the best hug. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, here I said, this is me. Hey, hey, here I said, I am so proud of you. And so because of that,
She was taken to the emergency or to the hospital last night for some um, <coughs> issues. She was <coughs> having some hallucinations and paranoia. I just talked to him this morning, and they are dismissing her. Not sure what's going on, but the Lord knows. So keep them in prayer. She has bone cancer and is going through a lot of the treatments and her outcome of course is very bleak. But you know, they were trying to instill, you know, faith and, and the lady is a believer. And so um, Mary said, I want you to pray too, you know, help us all pray. So, you know, we believe with her and stand with her. And while I was praying about that, God said, Don't just pray for her healing, pray for her faith. Come on.
same message. Hold fast to that which was given to you. And I, I think that's true with each one of us. We're in a time right now where it's like, you know, Lord, sometimes we, we talk about it, we look around, and we think, we know you're there, but the world can't really see. All they see is us, and right now we're, I'm sorry, we're a little bit ineffective. Yes. We're not at all the potential that we're supposed to be, although all things have a time with God. And if we try to run ahead of it, we'll be like Saul when Samuel told him to wait. You can't run ahead of God. But I told him, I said, Lord, you're asking the hardest thing humans can do is wait. Yeah. But you know that scripture came alive to me, those that wait upon the Lord yeah. shall renew their strength. He, literally, it means wait upon him. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Just don't get ahead of him. Just wait. Well, that was so difficult for me. And I assume that we're all Adam's seed, that it's the, the same for all of us. Yeah. But if ever there was a time that he said, wait, <laughs> he will renew our strength. He'll give us, you know, everything that could be shaken, shaken. There are people that I thought were believed that now they have compromised their belief to the point that, well, yeah, a good Buddhist is going to go to heaven. A good, uh, you know, it's not for me to judge that, except that the scripture said there is one way. Yeah. Now, if I believe that, I have to try to tell them, even if they don't want to hear it, that, listen, let me, let me tell you something. Then you have to decide. But so many times we're backing off because somebody says, oh, you know, we'll, we'll offend them. Yeah. Well, they offend me. Yeah. Where does this offense, you know, where does it, where does it come? Jesus offended them. He offended them all the time. He, he wasn't, that wasn't his purpose, but if the truth offends, then we have to offend people.
this song to edify us, to build us, Lord, and make us into the people that we are supposed to be according to your word. We thank you, Father, for all of your blessings. We thank you for all of your promises, the promise of healing that you have given us, Lord. We declare it right now over all of those that are suffering from any sort of sickness or disease or ailment. Father, we ask that you take our focus from the things around us and the support of the things from above that we know that come from you. We are here temporarily. When we go to you, we are going to be there forever. Do not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you. I am a believer, and these times do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection for which God created it to function. And I forbid it not function in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation This is the realm of your glory. 
This is the realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power, and it's moving in this place. La-da-da, la-da-da. This is the realm. This is the realm of your glory. This is the realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power, and it's moving in this place.
few months ago, my wife couldn't even breathe. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Totally on an oxygen machine. Thank you, God, for your goodness and grace. Shelly declared that she would be dancing before the Lord again. Am I right? Thank you, Jesus. Am I right, Cindy? He's still a healer today. Yes, Lord. She's my Miriam. Yes, Okay. Lord. That first slide with the timbrels and dancing, that's Miriam, Moses' sister. She's been a Miriam in my life. Her and Thank Jane. Thank you, God. Jane will pick up her mantle here in a minute. I can, <laughs> she's, she's already getting toasted by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> The Lord loves Pop Tarts too, so. Thank you, Lord. You are good, God. But He's a good God. He's a faithful God. Yes. And He's a holy God. Yes. He's the God of now. Yes. He's the same yesterday, and forever. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Thank Lord. You, Lord. Yes. And your mercies are new every morning. Yes. Lord, we love what you've done in the past. Yes, God. But we love what you're opening the door to right now. Yes, Lord. Lord, we love the past revivals. We love the revivals of repentance, Lord, where people have come from the north and the south and the east and the west. And now you're releasing grace across this land. Yes. And your Holy Spirit is moving once again, even in our midst, Lord, you're enveloping this room right now, Lord. We may not feel it, but Lord, you said where two or three are gathered, there you are also. And your promises are yes and amen. Even before the foundations of the earth, Lord, you ordained this day to be declaring your love and your mercy and your grace, Lord, upon this, upon this room, upon this land, upon this region. You are worthy, Lord. You are author of this song, Roy Fields, was just down in Brazil. And then this song, In the Presence of Angels, was running rampant through the whole country of Brazil. Simultaneously, as we're singing it here in North America, it's being declared in South America. This song. This is the song of this generation rising up. He who has an ear, let him hear. He who has an ear, let him hear. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 There's a shifting in the wind. There's a fresh breeze of God blowing across this land. There's a hunger coming forth. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss the next move of God. Brightest sun, 
Jesus, you're glorious. You are so glorious. With eyes that blaze like burning fire. Jesus, you're glorious. You are so glorious. King of glory, have your Jesus, you're glorious. You are so glorious. With eyes that blaze like burning fire. Jesus, you're glorious. You are so glorious. King of glory, have your glory. Oh 
See the Lord and His hand. 
Give the Lord a big hand. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Appreciate it. I ask you all to, uh, uh, although she didn't get mentioned in our prayer request, but when you prayed, Remember Suzanne and her family uh, had a bunch of issues going on here the last couple of weeks. And, uh, lost loved one, and so uh, I 
know she'd appreciate it, and so would Mike and, and their my entire family. So when you pray, remember, remember them. Praise God. Appreciate all of you being here today, and thank you so much for your uh, testimonies. Amen. It just uh, it's always a blessing, and uh, it helps confirm what God is speaking to me that he wants me to share with you, and so that's always a good thing, at least for me it is. And uh, thank you for sharing your prayer request. It's a privilege to uh, be able to join with you and believe the Lord for whatever uh, needs you might have. Praise God. We've all got them. Amen. But uh, I'm just grateful this morning to know the Lord and to know that uh, he is faithful. Praise the Lord. I, I, we had a family get together uh, yesterday evening. We went out to eat with a bunch of the family. and I don't know what there was, 14 or 15 of the family. But anyway, uh, we got ready to leave, and my truck had a flat tire. And uh, so I had to ride with Sally. In fact, I drove, but her car is so little. That, and she's got a, one of the grandkids' car seats behind the driver's seat. I couldn't only get it back so far, so I had my knees up against the steering wheel and nearly rubbed a hole in my pant leg. But I told her on the way down, I said, you're going to have to drive home because I'm not going to be able to do this twice. So after, I don't know how long we were there, three, four hours or whatever it was, we got ready to leave, and, and Sally drove home. And I was wishing that I'd have had one more drink. <laughs> a glass of wine, something. I don't know. But. So we talk about uh, the Lord developing faith. If you want faith, go for a ride with this girl. Praise the Lord. Take, take a ride. Hallelujah. Yeah. It'll strengthen your faith. It'll, it'll, if you're not before, you'll be a believer. It's kind of like, you know, no atheists in foxholes. No atheists that ride with my wife, praise God. No, she did, a, she did a good job. I just love to torment her because this is the only time I can do it without her being able to reach me. But anyway, we had a great time, and uh, I'm looking forward to going home after church and changing a flat tire, praise God. But uh, how many of you know that this book gets so kind of twisted and manipulated to fit whatever our particular denomination might be or whatever our you know, core beliefs might be. But it's true regardless of how we try to make it fit us. We're supposed to fit it. And that's a good thing. It isn't that uh, this is not a book of rules and regulations. It's a, it's a book that identifies our God and who we are in him. And it's all by grace. None of us sitting here can say that, you know, I did this, this, and this, and then God saved me. Now, we did all kinds of junk, and he still saved us, praise the Lord, because of his grace. It's because of his works that we're declared righteous, not because of ours. If it was our, our righteousness, he said, it's filthy rags. No matter what we do to be good in, our, in and of ourselves, it doesn't, ma it doesn't ever measure up. But he did the job once and for all. And by putting faith in that finished work of his, we are declared the righteousness of God in him. Now, that's good news. Yes. That, that is the good news that everybody's looking for. Amen. Yes. And we as a church, uh, you know, as a religion, uh, are always trying to put the onus on the people. And God never did that because he knew it was impossible for us to ever measure up to perfection, to holiness, to righteousness, to God. So he comes in the form of man and suffers on our behalf yep. so that we can be declared righteous yep. and accepted in the beloved so that God can love us and interact with us without any sense of judgment or <clears throat> condemnation or shame, just simply a father loving his children. Amen? Amen. That's the good news. Praise God. So I want to I talk to you then a little bit this morning about us in that position of being in Christ the way God sees us. Now, we may not see each other this way. We may not see ourselves this way a lot of times because we're too close to the, to the skin, you know? We know that we're flawed. We, even when we're acting at our best, we're still pretty messed up, praise the Lord. But he has declared us righteous. And so even in our flawed condition, we can still identify with one another in Christ. That's what Paul said. I, I, I have determined that I will see nothing except Jesus, 
in, in you. Amen? So that makes it easier for all of us to get along, right? So I'm going to start here with John chapter 1 and verse 17, Sheila. And I'm going to take it easy on Sheila. I've been wearing her out the last <laughs> few weeks with all kinds of scriptures. So I'm not going to use as many. I'll, I'll use enough to validate hopefully what I'm saying. But, but otherwise, I'll give her a break in between. Amen? So John 1.17 is where we begin. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth are synonymous. I mean, they, they go together. And so grace and truth comes by Jesus Christ. All right? John chapter 4 and verse 23. Try to keep these scriptures in your head if you can, because that's where we're going to be working around. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You can't worship God without the truth of grace because you're still alienated from him. It's grace that makes us acceptable to God so that we can come to him and worship, and, and then our worship is, uh, is uh, acceptable. Now, there's all kinds of ways to worship. We, we do all kinds of stuff here that, uh, you know, some people think, what, what was that that we just saw? Or, you know, what was that all about? Well, we're trying to give people the liberty that they should have in Christ. So they can express what God's doing in their life and, and so on and so forth. And sometimes that kind of, you know, you know, you might want to hear what one person said, not necessarily what somebody else said, you know. But it's all good in Jesus. Praise the Lord. So the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Because the Father seeketh such to worship him. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, John 14, verse 6. John 14 and 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. So J Jesus is the truth. Now, how many of you know we are in Christ as a believer? We're in Christ, and Christ is in us. We've become one. So we are truth from that definition. Now, we may not always express it. We may not always look like truth. We may not always understand even the truth. But we're still, we're still there. We just need to find our way through it, right? So you might find it hard to believe that when I was a uh, sophomore in high school, and this is just one incident that I'm pointing out. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. Somebody might have been in school with me or saw me yeah, back then. But anyway, uh, I, I skipped school one day. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> But what is even more amazing, because I'm sure most of you could believe that I would skip school on many occasions. <laughs> but what was bizarre about this one was what I did when I skipped school. Me and a couple of buddies of mine went to the Salisbury house. <laughs> Honest to God. Now, I mean, of all the things you could do when you skip school, where do you find three 16-year-olds going to the Salisbury house? Yeah. Well, my friends and I. So we went to the Salisbury house, and the thing that I remember the most about that place, it was, you know, I mean, it was, you know, a, you know, really uh, magnificent architecture and the interior and everything. It's all, the stones were all brought over here from England and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But the thing that amazed me and got my attention more than anything else was this one big picture when you come into the main area. And I assume it's still this way because I don't think I've been back there since... But anyway, there was this huge picture on the wall of this guy, and his eyes followed you everywhere you went. You go out the stairs, you're looking, you're looking at you. You go into the other room, you peek around the corner, and there he is staring at you. And no, everywhere you went, it was like his eyes were glued on you. The way the painting was painted, it just his eyes followed you everywhere. Now, my buddies thought it was really cool, and they were doing all kinds of, you know, can you see me here? And, up here, but it was freaking me out. It creeped me out because I thought, man, this, he won't take his eyes off of me. It's like, you know, it's weird. He never stopped staring at me. He never blinked. It was just, oh, it gave me the creeps. But truth is a lot like that picture. Or, or maybe I ought to say that that picture is a lot like truth. Truth never looks away. You can pretend truth doesn't exist. You can close your eyes. 
You're, you can close your heart even to it. You can simply turn and look the other direction. But truth is still the truth. Yes, it, is. it never looks away. It never blinks. By his stripes, yes. you were healed. Yes. He sets the captives free. Amen. He became poor that we might become rich. Amen. He became sin that we would become the righteousness of God in Christ. Truth just doesn't change in spite of how we feel about it or in spite of how we look at it or think about it. There are ways to read the Bible and ways to teach the Bible that make you feel like you've been beat up or beat down, and then you wonder whether you're going to spend eternity in heaven or hell. But the Bible is not a book of fear in spite of what we may have learned over the years. The Bible is a book of truth. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's a book of truth. John 10.10. 10. I know it's in there because I read it. There it is. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. I'm come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. Too many of us as, as Christians have settled for something so much less than what Jesus intended. Too many who profess to be Christians have settled for a mechanical life of religion instead of a meaningful relationship with Jesus. Religion is defined by rules, as I said, and regulations. But a relationship is built on intimacy and on trust. Religion can be scheduled. Relationship is spontaneous. And that's why we don't, we try not to be too regimented in the way we do things. I know that's uncomfortable for a lot of people because we're used to going to church and you get the little handout when you come in and you know exactly, it's like, you know, it's like a funeral. You know, you know, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. You know, we have a certain amount of routine simply because we're herd mentality. <laughs> but we try not to make that control us. We try to be as spontaneous as we can so that God can express himself however he wants to, amen, through us. So uh, that, that's a big difference. Religion is about measuring up. But relationship is about growing deeper. Yes. Romans chapter 9, we're going to read verses 31 through 33. Romans 9, 31 through 33. Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they sought it not by faith but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. In other words, they tried to be righteous, but they were going about it the wrong way. They were trying to be themselves righteous instead of trusting in the righteousness of God. Amen. Jesus is that stumbling stone. So because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Just exactly what Don said earlier, we're not trying to offend anybody. We don't go out of our way to be offensive or to be aggressively hostile towards people who don't share our belief. But this is still the truth. Yes. And we'd be, we'd be ill-advised to not say what the truth says. Okay. Amen. So behold, I lay in Zion a stomach on a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. Praise God. So religion is man-made. Relationship with Jesus is God ordained. Yes. Something God planned before the foundation of the world. Absolutely. Religion is predictable. Yes. Relationship is passionate. It's powerful. Yes. Praise God. Uh -huh. Religion earns the praise of men. You know, if I walk around and convince you that I'm a really perfect person and I never do anything wrong, first of all, that's quite a, a feat in itself. 
if I can do, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost just showed up right over there. In the amen corner. Praise God. But religion's always looking for somebody to pat them on the back and say, oh, boy, he, the, he's so holy. She's so holy. They pray so much. They, they do this. They do that. And they never go there. And they never do this. And they never have that. And, and so it's all about us. It's all about what men do to get the <coughs> praise of other men. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Relationship with Jesus results in the praise of heaven. All of heaven rejoices yes. over yes. one person who turns to God, yes. trusts in God instead of in themselves and their own ability. Amen? Amen. Psalms 46, verse 4. I'm so glad it's this way. I tried it the other day, other way. I, I was a horrible failure, even though nobody really knew it except me and God. And possibly my wife, who was sworn to secrecy. <laughs> You know, wife cannot testify against her husband unless she really wants to. I took full advantage of that, praise God. <laughs> but there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. There is a river, and that river is Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. We talk about, you know, the, he, uh, the waters of life he gives freely. Because he is a river. He, it's a flowing thing. Out of you, if you receive Christ, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Out of you will flow Christ. Yes. You're filled with Jesus. Amen? Yes. Not some religious kind of imagery, right. but the reality of God's love, God's grace, God's mercy, God's acceptance. Yes. Amen? So, praise the Lord. Look, let's look at this then. So, Jesus is the river. Let's look at Ezekiel 47, verses 1 through 9. Ezekiel 47, 1 through 9. We know this. We've had prophecies about this. We've preached about it. We've sung about it. We've done lots of things. But there is a river. Okay? Ezekiel 47, 1 through 9. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from, under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had... The line in his hand went forth eastward. He measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the ankle. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. And again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Seven through nine. Should go to nine. I want to go to nine. Keep going. That's the next one. That's the next one. Praise the Lord. That's the next one. Go ahead. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert Go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. Now, if this isn't talking about Jesus, I don't know what is. Praise the Lord. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed. And everything shall live wherever the river goes. Praise the Lord. Wherever the river is, there's life, there's healing, there's deliverance, and there is abundance. Praise God. So you see where Jesus is, there is abundant life. That's why he said, I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. So what if that is a picture of faith? What if we have settled for splashing around in religion instead of getting lost in the river of relationship with Jesus. Come on. Come on. Instead of going deep, amen, into the spirit 
rather than shallow out here in the natural. Going through the motions, but without getting any results. Praise the Lord. I, I know that this is a, a metaphorical kind of question, so let me just say it another way. You're healed. You're prospered. You're delivered. You are the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Blessed going in, blessed coming out. You're the lender and not the borrower. Amen. This is the finished work of Jesus. But we've got to operate from this finished work instead of the idea that we're trying to attain this. It's already there. If we're in Christ, we're in the river. And in the river is abundance. In the river is fullness of life and joy forevermore. Amen. In the river, there is nothing lacking. Everything is healed. Everything is whole. There's abundance. There's teeming of everything that we have need of. And then some. Excess. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can make the picture go away, but the truth isn't going anywhere. The truth is still the truth. Hebrews 13, uh, verses 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee, so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, yes. and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. This is the testimonies we've been hearing all morning. Right. We look at the news. We hear the news. We see it. We, we're, we're, you know, we're just pretty much uh, engulfed by it. In every place you go, the radio, the television, the internet, the everything, the, tele the iPhone, everything is just, we're constantly being bombarded with what man's saying about what the situation is. Right. But be of good cheer. Yeah. He has overcome, praise the Lord. And if we're in him and he's in us, we've got nothing to worry about. All we've got to do is believe the truth instead of the lie. Yeah. Believe what God has said instead of what man's saying. Yeah. I'm not worried about what man says. God's bigger. Yes. God's greater. His truth is forever. It's settled forever yes. in heaven. Yes. It has to be settled on earth, and we're the only ones that can do it Amen. by declaring what he says. Amen? Amen? So in Exodus chapter 19, I'm not going to have to go there. I'll just tell you. You can check it out for yourself later. But Moses is in the middle of a close encounter with God. God's giving him the Ten Commandments. God's speaking to him. God's, you know, like this echoing voice. Amen? And Moses is given these Ten Commandments. He's given rules. He's given the letter of God's law, right? But then in Acts chapter 2, you've got the disciples in the middle of a closer encounter with God. Amen? And now it's, they're given the Spirit of God. Amen? The power himself comes. The dunamis of God. The Spirit of God comes. Amen? And faith explodes. So much so that thousands are getting saved. Thousands that, are, that never believed before all of a sudden now are believing. They're seeing all kinds of miracles and signs and wonders. Why? Did these guys become something special? No. God showed up. The river flowed right through that place and brought the abundance and all the excesses that God had been promising to man based on God's goodness, not on their goodness. Praise God. These were the same guys that lied, that denied, that did all the negative stuff that they did. But now God has come. And shown up, amen, because they waited on the Lord. Remember, he said, tarry you in Jerusalem and you will be endued with power from on high. God will come in the power of his might and you will be empowered, amen, so that you can begin to see the river, so that you can begin to experience the abundance that God has paid the price for you to have. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this, in fact, was rebellion against religion. I know that's kind of rubbing the cat the wrong way, but it was rebellious behavior based on the religion that everybody understood that came from God. But it was rebellious. Some people try to prove they have courage, and other people actually do. You just believe, and you act on that belief. You can go around telling everybody about how courageous you are. Right, right. I'm a believer, and blah, 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 blah. That's fine. But other people just have courage yes. Yes. and live their life based on the truth 
of what God says. Amen. If we were to play a game of word association this morning, and I ask what, what comes to your mind when I say rebellious, most people would say something like criminal, uh, convict, my favorite two-year-old. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But rebellious is usually thought of as a negative. Mm -hmm. it, its definition actually is resisting management or resisting control. Mm -hmm. Religion is simply management. Yes. It's control. It is. And Jesus, you can look it up for yourself in the book of Revelation, said he hated the spirit of the Nicolaitans. And that spirit of the Nicolaitans was a spirit of hierarchy yes. where you have a separation between clergy right. and congregation, right. where you have the bishop, yes. the priest, the pope, the pastor, the lead pastor. Right. We are all kings and priests in the kingdom of God. We have different yeah. functions, but that doesn't separate us in any way or make anybody any greater or any less in the eyes of God. Right. Praise God. We're all rebels, but in the good sense. Yes. We're rebelling against a, 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 uh, a condition or a uh, kind of hierarchy that has existed uh, since about the third century A.D., if not before. The original church wasn't like that. Paul even said it. What guys were arguing about, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Paul. Paul said, hey, did I die for you? I mean, did you get baptized into Paul? Who's Apollos? Who's Paul? They're just nobody but like you. The chiefest of sinners, he called himself. That puts him on a, you know, right on an even keel with me. We're, we're right there together. Praise the Lord. So, uh, rebellious in that sense is grace. It's, it's the grace of God. Rebellious is, is also not often used as an adjective for joy. But these rebels had joy unspeakable and full of glory. The Holy Spirit came and filled them yeah. with the abundance of God. Yeah. And they were speaking in other tongues. They were shouting. They were having a you know, great old time. In fact, so much so that everybody thought they were drunk. Yeah. Now, I've been drunk. Yeah. And it's not, you know, you can tell the difference between somebody that's sober and somebody that's drunk. Well, they were so happy. They were getting on. They were having such a good time. And, and they were so unlike them, themselves normally sure. that everybody said, this can't be right. They, they've got to be high. They've got to be drunk on something. Yeah. Well, they were. They were high on Jesus. They were drunk on that living water on the river of life that had flowed into them and totally transformed the way they looked at God and one another. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. It's grace. Yes. Romans chapter 7 and verse 15. And we need to be a people whom the Son sets free yes. is free indeed. Yes. He has freed us for the sake of freedom. Yes. And why then do we get free and then go back and just give somebody a bunch of other rules after they've all been taken away? Let's trust Him and let Him yes. do the work. Let yes. the Holy Spirit work it out in us yes. instead of us trying to do what, again, what Don and what others have said, getting ahead of God, trying to be God in somebody else's life. Accept Him. Accept them and let God worry about it. He died for them. You didn't. I'm not saying we have to condone every kind of bad behavior. I'm saying we still got to love the person in spite of their behavior. God will take care of the behavior. Our job is to love the person. That's what Jesus did. Hallelujah. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do, that do I not. What I hate, that do I. That could be on my tombstone. That could be the epitaph, you know, of all of humanity. For the, for the truth is, what I want to do, I don't seem to be able to do. What I don't want to do, I'm always doing it. Yes. You know, it's like schizophrenia on steroids. Drop down to verse 24 and verse 25. That's Paul, by the way, that's saying this. The one who went up into heaven, the third heaven, and saw things that he couldn't even repeat because there were words for what he'd seen. Right. There weren't words in our languages that could express the dimension and the glory that he saw in the heavenly realm. And yet he says, 
I'm still a screw up. I still want to do, I want to, in my, my mind, I want to serve God, but my flesh just, you know, it's like a free-for-all. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we've got deliverance. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Chapter 8, verse 1, next verse. This is where the joy of this rebellion comes in. Rebellious joy. Praise God. There is therefore, because of what we just read, no, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, who, in other words, are focused on Jesus and not on themselves. Praise the Lord. It isn't. Because I'm not doing anything. I'm not letting my flesh do anything. I can't stop it half the time. Right. But I can focus on what Jesus says instead of what I'm seeing. Yes. Instead of what I'm feeling. Yes. That's what Paul's telling us. That's the, that's the good news for the church. That will cause people to turn to God and drop off some of the things that may be hindering them and causing them all their problems without being condemned for it. Love with all of your problems, amen, will cause you to want to love that person even more. And you'll change Almost like us by osmosis, you know, by the Spirit of God that's in you, develops in you. Yes. We, we are the branch. He's the vine. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, an apple tree, we've got an apple tree. And we've got a cherry tree. We've got some trees. But an apple tree, even without apples on it, is still an apple tree. It is. Right. Right. It is. It's, there's one out in my backyard right now, not an apple on it. And after she hacked it away here a week or two ago, it may never have apples. <laughs> but that's her problem, not mine. Hallelujah. I'm focused on the cherry tree. Yes. But I'm just saying, without apples, it's still an apple tree. And at some point, that apple tree will produce fruit. Yes. Not out of its own strength, but because of the root system, because of the vine. We are the branches. He's the vine. He produces the fruit. We just bear fruit. We're not, we're not, uh, you know, we don't produce fruit. The, you cut a branch off, it's the branch is off. But the other branch will bear fruit. Why? Because of the vine, because of the root, because of the, the, the trunk system, amen, that delivers the, 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 the uh, energy and the food source to those branches. Well, the Holy Spirit is our source. He's the river of life that flows through us, and ultimately, He will produce fruit. Yes. You can groan and grain and, and grunt and, and uh, you know and, and fast and pray all you want. It won't produce fruit. It may make you more accepted. I mean, you know, in, in, in the sense of being available for the fruit, but you cannot produce it. It's impossible. It's the vine that produces the fruit. That's why he said, I am the vine, you're the branches. If you abide in me, you will produce fruit. Yes. It's, a, it's a given. It'll happen, and it won't be you doing it. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's joy. That's the joy that comes from rebellious people. Not against God. Against the God that we have been fed. The image of a God that is angry judgmental, that's going to get you, that's just waiting for an opportunity to smack you down and take you out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remember I said uh, some people try to prove that they have courage. They bungee jump. <laughs> they skydive. They hunt grizzly bears. They ride with my wife. <laughs> they climb mountains, rock climbing. They become extremely religious. Most likely, you began your day by waking up in bed, right? Did you know that over 5,000 people a year check into emergency rooms with pillow related injuries? Fact. 5,000 people a year check into emergency rooms with pillow related injuries. Now I've got a, my pillow. And I still got issues. You know? I've got, this is true. I'm just making this up. 5,000 people 
end up in emergency rooms every year because of pillow-related injuries. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Sleeping is dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> it takes courage <laughs> to lay down with that pillow. You don't know what's going to happen. You got all kinds of angry geese. You're laying in their eider. Or foam, and you don't know where it came from. We don't even know what foam is. But I'm telling you, it's, it takes courage just to go to bed at night. Okay, so after you get out of bed, you probably use the bathroom. You know that 40,000 Americans suffer toilet-related injuries of some kind. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. 40,000 Americans suffer toilet-related injuries every year. I don't even want to think about it. Whether you realize it or not, when you use the toilet, you're living on the edge. You're not, you're not just sitting on the edge. You're living on the edge. You can end up in the hospital. It's scary. <laughs> it's a scary world. Do you drive? You ought to know that the U.S. Department of Transportation reports someone is involved in a car accident every 10 seconds. And my wife is only on the road maybe an hour a day. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hear about this. You, you know that. So I'm, I'm just playing it all the way because I'm, I'm already in up to here. So it doesn't matter. From here on, it doesn't matter. So. It's all grace, praise the Lord. <laughs> Every 10 seconds. Everything is risky is my point. Yeah. Everything is risky. Yeah. Being religious, following rules, keeping standards. It doesn't take any courage. It just takes discipline. Here's what takes courage. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm holy because he's holy. Yes. I'm accepted in the beloved. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. I prophesy. We all should prophesy. I can speak to the enemy and cause him to flee. Amen. That takes courage. It doesn't take discipline. It takes courage. Living in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, that's risky. Because it takes you to places you've never been. It'll make you say things you never thought you could say. It'll make you do things you thought you'd never do. Because it's faith. It takes faith. So just do it. Just do it. That's, that's what God is saying. Just do it. Just do it as if you knew it to be a fact. Regardless of what the, concept, the result is, still lay hands on the sick. If somebody's sick, lay hands on them. Pray for them. Don't be thinking about, well, what happens if they don't get healed? If this happens, that. Look, it doesn't tell you what to do if it doesn't happen. It just tells you what to do. The truth is we lay hands on the sick because that's what he said. These signs will follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. That hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're still supposed to be doing it. Yes. We're supposed to speak to the mountain. We're supposed to prophesy to the obstacles and issues in our life rather than going, oh, my God, what a big mountain. Yes. You know, when God spoke light, he didn't say, wow, it's really dark down there. He just said, light be. And we were created in his image, and we're supposed to function in the way God functions. Yes. God functions with words. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And now we have that Word living in us, and we need to speak it. Right. We need to declare the truth of God yes. in whatever circumstance and situation we find ourselves in. Yes. That takes courage. Yes. And you don't have to tell anybody how courageous you are. No. You just will be. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 11.1. 1. 
We need to just do it the same way we do our natural life. We need to lay hands on the sick just like we use the toilet. We need to, you know, cast out demons just like we sleep with a pillow. We need to, you know, say things that we say uh, in, in agreement with the truth of God's word just like we get in the car and drive in spite of the fact that every 10 seconds somebody's getting in a wreck. Are you going to stop going to the bathroom based on what I told you today? Oh, I hope not. No, you're going to go ahead and do it because you've got to do it. Right? Are you going to quit sleeping at night because you might have a pillow-related injury that's going to get you in the... No. So why don't we do what the Word of God says? Why don't we have the faith in God's Word to do what it tells us to do? Just do it. Don't worry about the consequences. Just do it. God said, I'll take care of the consequences. Yes. If you'll seek first the kingdom of God, all the stuff will be added to you. Just go for it. Just yes. do it. Yes. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. There is the perfect illustration of what we're talking about. There is just a certain amount of courage involved in living your life built on the existence and relationship with God that we can't see, we can't touch, or feel in the natural. That is courage. That's what God calls courage. And it's not necessarily seen by others. You don't get a blue ribbon for it. You don't get a medal. You don't get a, a, a promotion. You don't get a handshake from the president. But you get an eternity with God. And you get to see the abundant life in this realm. Amen? All right, let's go back to the beginning. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen? John 4, 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. Truth never looks away. Truth never blinks. But it produces courage. And it produces faith. It reveals a relationship with God Almighty through Jesus Christ. We'll finish with these two scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Actually, three scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, Amen. what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, yes. and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, yes. who believe the truth. And live courageously with it. Amen. Last scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes. Give him a praise this morning. Praise yes. Amen, amen. God bless you. Go in the power of his might. Go in the truth. Show yourself mighty amen. through Christ. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great week. Stay safe out there. People are driving the cars. Yeah.